Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday reflection. Before we begin, uh, we have set up a WhatsApp broadcast group that I will administer uh, to share prayer requests that have come in to us from congregation and beyond. If you want part, to be part of that group, please contact me. If you're not on WhatsApp, then could you speak to Elaine McNeil and she will be able to pass on those prayer requests to you. Needless to say, uh, these are in confidence and not to go beyond the group. Tomorrow, the ministers of South Belfast Presbytery will be reading the story of Jesus' death, the Passion story. And you'll be able to find that on uh, our website and Facebook and so on. And of course then, on Easter Sunday, we will have our Easter celebration. There will be a number of people from the congregation taking part, so uh, please join us for that at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. I want to take you to a couple of days before Jesus had that meal with his disciples, to the end of another meal in the home of Simon the leper. You'll find the story in Mark's Gospel, chapter 14 and in verse 3. Let's read these words together. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor, and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This is a story of extravagant love. That got the harshest of treatment from the followers of Jesus and the others who were present at that meal. They said, what a waste. Jesus said, what a wonderful gift. Of course, that perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. But that's not the point of this story. The point is that this woman gave to Jesus a gift that encouraged him, that prepared him, that showed him that love was more important than anything else and that his love for us that would take him to the cross would also be replicated in the lives of others. When Jesus died, upon that cross who was late on that Friday. Time was short to get his body from the cross and into Joseph's tomb. So all the preparations and rituals that surrounded death in Jesus' day just went by the wayside. Hurriedly he was placed into that tomb. But what this woman did, this wonderful gift was to anoint his body with that nard, that perfume. And Jesus recognised that this was just one of those wonderful, encouraging moments that would help him through the most agonising and difficult days of his life. What she has done will be remembered 
And here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, remembering what she did for Jesus. What are we doing for Jesus today? Is our love for him extravagant? Do we give him everything that is precious to us and say, here, take these and use these gifts, use these hands, use this body, use us in your service? When I was thinking of how Jesus' body was hurriedly placed into that tomb, I thought of what is happening today as we cope with this COVID-19 virus. All the normal rituals that we have and ceremonies around bereavement and death have gone by the wayside. There's no gathering in the home, no cups of tea, no remembering the stories, sometimes that would bring tears to our eyes and sometimes cause us to laugh. There's no funeral service, no church or funeral home. But now just a few close relatives, a few prayers, and the coffin lowered into the grave. A bit rushed, understandably so, in these difficult days, but still not done as we would want it to be done. And in God's wonderful providence for his son, his body was anointed with the perfume that would see him through those grave experiences until the glorious resurrection. What she did was not a waste, but a wonderful gift. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing gift of love that this woman bestowed upon Jesus. She showed how much she loved him by the gift that she gave him and she just didn't realise how much it meant to him. It meant so much to him. Today, Father, you know that we are in the midst of a terrible pandemic. And you know the grief of those whose loved ones have died during this time. And you know their sorrow at not being able to mourn their loved one in the normal ways that we do. It all seems a little rushed. It's just not right. But in these days, it's just how it has to be. We ask, O oh God, that you would be their comfort and their strength. That you would support them and surround them with your presence and with your love. We pray for those who are in intensive care at this time. We pray for our Prime Minister and for all like him whose lives are in danger. We pray, Father, that they may recover, that they may be able to go home and resume their lives and their work again. Father, we pray that you would keep us all safe, that you would guard our lives and that you would, in your love and mercy, free us from this awful virus. 
grant your blessing upon those who are working within our health service to bring comfort and help and healing to those in great danger. Be with us tonight. And as we think of this woman's extravagant gift of love, may we also give to you an extravagant gift of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.